hook up Oakland and I will be your moderator for today's class. Today is Thursday, November 30th, 2023. You have been muted. May I ask that you please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers in Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and a divine revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, and we are grateful to welcome other students studying with us from the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title of Lord. The true title of the Word of Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title of God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted for Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. And minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit 
manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. <coughs> Pardon me. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. We'll start this morning's class off with an, an opening prayer given by Dr. Deborah Hanna. We will have our scripture reading of Matthew, the 24th chapter, read this morning by Dr. Dennis Pratt. We will have a musical selection from Dr. Jacqueline McCain, and we will have further announcements right after our scripture. May we have a prayer, please. Greetings to the assembly. Dear Father Yahweh, <clears throat> thank you ever so much for allowing us again to gather in your name. It is a pleasure to learn of your purpose pattern and plan of salvation. Please, Yahshua, continue to teach us and hold on to us throughout this age and the ages to come. This and all the blessings we ask in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the Holy Spirit. 
with this, may we all say, hallelujah. 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 Brethren, good morning, brethren. I want to sing to you, to Yah be the glory, because we know we give him all praises and all glory. To Yah be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise your way, praise your way. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise your way, praise your way. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of Yah. The vilest offender who truly believes the moment when Yahshua a pardon received. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Yahshua the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our Savior in Yahshua will be. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the earth hear his voice. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahshua. Good day, family. I'll be reading Matthew 24, Matthew 24th chapter from the Holy Name Version, quickly compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, Scripture Research Association. Matthew chapter 24. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahshua said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the age. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye, not, ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the plagues. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because apostasy shall abound, 
the love of many shall grow cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the glad tidings, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For, who, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving up marriages until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your king doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master hath made ruler over his household to give them bread in due season. Blessed is that servant 
whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My master delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the master of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That was Matthew chapter 24. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 I would like to now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Thank you, everybody, for coming here today. It's a pleasure and honor to see you. Um, once more, we also have some visitors with us today. I'm very glad to see you. And I want to just turn this over to our visitor, Dr. Carla Davis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Carla. Good morning. How's everyone today? I'm going to drop a file in the chat. Oh, I wanted to ask you, if you want to just take over, you can do that, too. You can do anything you want. So I can share my screen? Yep. Okay. Let me. All right. Can you see my my screen, everybody? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yes, all right. So this is the file that I dropped in the chat for you all. Um, and uh, I was uh, asked um, to join your class today um, because I believe some of you heard um my um uh, going over prophetic time with the madison wisconsin class um and i was asked to continue on with that and also uh talk about the year 2000 um i see someone's hand is raised you have a question jean yes i just wondered uh I can see uh, the file that you put on the screen, but mm -hmm. is there any way it can be made any larger? Um, actually, it's uh, is that a little bit better? That's better. Okay. Thank you so but much. the the same file is on. Uh, I want to be able to see the whole the whole oh, thing well, without. Yeah. You yeah, can, you <laughs> now, I, I, put the, I put the file in, in the chat so you can also bring it up. We're going to do some reading um, as I've done before, um, because I want to make sure that everyone uh, can begin their studies and share with other people, um, because it's important for all of us to be able to teach and learn from one another. Uh, so me just uh, talking isn't always, um, I know that's, that's the common thing in class. People do a lot of talking. They don't do a lot of teaching. But today we're going to do some research. Um, okay, so I was asked to um, talk about prophetic time to continue on, but and also the year 2000. But before I do that, I may have to come back for another session to give you guys another example on how to use prophetic time from the scriptures, um, because that will um, be another additional two hours of, of talking. So we're going to talk about the year 2000 today. Um, and um, the reason the reason why I want to bring it up is because um, some of you may have seen the open letter that was written. I, I don't know who, who wrote it. And also there's several uh, videos that are coming up on YouTube where, um, from what I've seen, they're mocking. Um, I was going to write a letter to the individuals of, of that, but I think it would be better for me to uh, talk about some of the things they had in the letter, especially the year 2000 and saying that Dr. Kinley said 
that the end would be in the year 2000, um, I think it would be better to teach rather than to write the letter. So if any of you, you don't have to tell me their name or anything, um, but if any of you know who's doing the YouTube videos or who are, is responsible for the letter, um, if you can share this video as well as... Um, Excuse me, Dr. Uh, Davis, side. you keep fading in and out. You're getting, oh. you're going low. Oh, um, I'm on Wi-Fi. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you, but you keep getting, you speak loud and then you go low. Oh, okay. I'll try to, to speak louder. I'm, I'm, I don't have a very loud voice, so. Okay. Um, I'll try my best. Great. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you know who, who's responsible, please share um, my lecture on prophetic time with um, Madison and also this lecture with them. I also um, would like to go over in the future how to, um, uh, using the tabernacle, using the scriptures, how you come up using prophetic time to uh, predict certain events. Um, or to look for certain things to happen on specific time periods. Uh, but that, again, is another lecture. Um, okay, so I could use some help with uh, reading. We did already read Matthew 24. I wanted to specifically have that read because when people in the organization say that Dr. Kinley said that the end of or the consummation would be in the year 2000, I want everyone to be aware that when Dr. Kinley would talk about chronology, he was talking about Usher and other chronologist um, figures. And he would always quote the Messiah. And the Messiah said that these days would be shortened. He said that the Messiah said that if you believe that Yahshua was the Messiah, some do not and some do. But if you believe that Yahshua was the Messiah, please note that he he's the one that said that these days will be shortened, that heaven and earth shall pass away and that no one not even the angels in heaven know the time so if you hear somebody tell you the time that's an indication to you that they don't know what they're talking about okay so we're going to read a little bit about um um james usher and also um just to make you aware, uh, James Usher also had a brother named Ambrose Usher. Um, I'm going to read that because sometimes uh, if Dr. Kinley is talking about Usher, make sure that you know which Usher he's talking about. Um, this is a school. You need to do research and stop just listening to whoever is talking to you and not asking a question not picking up a book, a magazine, not sitting down meditating about what you're hearing. Stop believing everything you hear. Otherwise, you're going to get in trouble. Okay? So, Ambrose Usher, who's James Usher's little brother here, um, he, I'm just going to read what it says on, on Wikipedia. You guys get your history books out and read more. But Ambrose Usher, before the completion of the authorized version of the Bible, now the authorized version of the Bible they're referring to here is the King James Bible that was uh, printed back in 1611. So this Usher, he prepared his own translation of the original Hebrew, which he dedicated to James I with the fond but unlikely hope that the king wanted as many English translations of the Bible as possible. It remained in manuscript in three volumes in the library of Trinity College, Dublin. His translation is, specific, is significantly less 
anachronistic than the authorized version. Um, nope, I think that's wrong. Thus, instead of, I'm not even going to pronounce that word, for example, um, and was a genuinely original work based on Hebrew and Greek text. But that said, it was clearly dependent upon earlier English translations. So there is a, uh, um, Dr. Kenley, in one of the newer transcripts, and I think we'll read it, he's going to mention about Usher translating a Bible. And if you do not know your history, you're going to think he's talking about James Usher when it was the brother. This Usher, James Usher, that um, spent his life studying chronology and history and the Bible, this one uh, created a uh, a chronology um, and did not do translations of the Bible. So James Usher. Usher's chronology represented a considerable feat of scholarship. It demanded great depth of learning and what was then known of ancient history, including the rise of the Persians, Greeks, and Romans, as well as expertise in the Bible, biblical languages, astronomy, ancient calendars, and chronology. So I just want to bring to your attention that there's two different ushers doing two different things, and they're brothers at the same college, and they're both in the ministry, okay? So um, this is all relevant to the year 2000. First, we're going to um, go over, I, I have a, a huge library here at home. Um, I don't always allow people in my library, but I pulled off a book that um, was published back in 2001 called Measuring Eternity, The Search for the Beginning of Time. I purchased the book back in 2002 and read it. I put some notes in here for us to read so that you have uh, some context behind when we go through Dr. Kinley's quotes when he mentions the year 2000 and um, when he mentions Usher and the other chronologists. So would anyone like to help me read? I can get, get it started. Yes, you have two oh. readers. Yes. You have two readers. Our readers are Dr. Joyce Van Hook and Dr. Jacqueline McCain. We can take, take turns if you like um, per bullet. Okay. Would you like to begin, um, ahead, Jackie? Dr. Or... Go on, Dr. Joyce. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Measuring Eternity, The Search for the Beginning of Time by Martin Gorst, 2001. Page four. Almost all ancient civilizations believed that the universe had existed before. Forever. I'm sorry, forever. <laughs> From ancient Babylon to early India, the, prever the prevailing belief was in an eternal world. Nearly always, this concept was combined with the idea of reoccurring cycles. Instead of having a beginning, time was thought to consist of endless eras repeated over and over again for eternity. The idea probably grew from the repetitive motion of the heavenly bodies, the daily round of the sun rising and setting, the monthly waxing and waning of the moon, the annual rotation of the constellations, which all recurred in an endless loop. By 1000 BC, this idea of cyclic time had taken root in the Hindu faith where the smallest cycle, the Maha Yuga, lasted 4,320,000 years. A thousand of these Maha Yugas made one Kalpa, and two Kalpas completed a single day in the life of Brahma, the chief Hindu deity. Mm. A similar view was held in ancient Greece. Time is infinite and the universe eternal. 
proclaimed Aristotle in the 4th century BC. Here the length of cycle was determined by astronomy. Plato suggested that they lasted the period of time it took for all planets to return to the same relative positions in their orbits that they had occupied at the at occupied at same earlier times. This span estimated at 36,000 years became known as the Great Year or Magus Annus and later a pop and later became popular in Rome. Okay, so the reason why I wanted this to be noted is that before um, Christianity, I should say, um, the people of the world, according to history that we know of, believed in cycles of time. And we all know that Dr. Kinley brought to our, our attention about um, a week of days and the week of weeks, a week of months, those are cycles, a week, uh, week of years. Um, those are cyclical cycles that re repeat over and over again. And in my last um, um, lecture about prophetic time, I did mention um, two people in the class where Dr. Kinley said that what he saw in his vision was the prophetic sequence going over and over and over repeating in time and that's what you see on the charts that he made the elementary chart the 40 plate chart and the moses chart you see those cycles just recurring over and over again okay and then also i mentioned um at the very end of my lecture that um uh, that you need to do some research on the um, procession of the equinox. So in this particular book, um, and I didn't plan it this way, but in this particular book, when they're talking about this estimate of 36,000 years known as the great year, if you um, do your research some of you may have already started on the precession of the equinox you would see it's not exactly um 36,000 years but it's more like 26 something but back in plato's day um this is um plato suggested that the uh they lasted a period that took all the planets to return to, set to the same relative position in their orbits um, the, this span that he's talking about is what I'm telling you to look at with the precession of the equinox. It's called the great year. Okay, so let's go ahead to the next. Okay. Jewish, uh, page five to seven, Jewish scripture with its story of the creation, stated clearly that the world had a beginning, a first day when God created the heaven and the earth. By the end of the first century AD, Christianity had adopted this Jewish history as its own, and in the following centuries, Christian missionaries spread the idea throughout the Roman world. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you here. What, what this is telling you is that up until uh, the Catholic Church began in the um, after the Messiah and the disciples have um, and the apostles have passed on, um, this is when they started having, oh, uh, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created, so there must be a date. Now, we know Dr. Kinley never gave a date on the beginning of creation. He explained to us that what he saw in his vision was that Moses saw the creation of heaven and earth. And when he was instructed by Yahshua to come down and write to teach the people, 
that when we read in Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, that that's not the beginning of creation. That is the beginning of Moses's vision. So Dr. Kinley did not give Dr. Kinley, the Messiah, none of none of them gave us, or even Moses, did not give us the beginning of time. What you see on your ages and dispensations chart that I mentioned in my last lecture that my uncle, Daryl Kinley, painted back when he was a young man, and he took it to his grandfather up into his apartment, rolled it out. His grandfather looked at it, Dr. Kinley and said, it looks good, but there's, it's not quite right. There's some things that can mislead the people. That's the chart that you're using um, right now. So do not put it in your head that when you see 6,000 years of time on that chart, that time has only been around for 6,000 years because you'll be wrong. No one told you that. Okay, so um, go ahead and read that over again. This this is this this whole time thing came out of a crisis of the Catholic Church, and I'm going to show it to you here. Um, start reading again. Uh, at the top of the page, or uh, the idea, the time itself. Uh, go ahead at the top. Jew Jewish scripture. Jew okay, Jewish scripture with its story of the creation stated clearly that the world had a beginning, a first day when God created the heaven and earth. By the end of the first century AD, Christianity had adopted the Jewish history as its own. And in the following centuries, Christian missionaries spread the idea throughout the Roman world. The idea that time itself had a starting point grew out of a crisis for the Catholic Church. At midnight on August 24th, four, four, uh, 410 AD, unknown hands opened Rome's Salarian Gate from the inside. Trumpets blasted, and the Goth army, led by their chieftain, Alaric, stormed the city. For three days, they ransacked the imperial city of its gold, silver, and jewelry. Then they left. When they heard the news, the people of the Roman world, which stretched all around the Mediterranean, reacted with shock. Rome, the invincible, the capital of the empire, the city that had not been captured in 800 years, had fallen. What could have happened? What, what could have caused such a calamity. The blame was laid on Christianity. For, at, for over 700 years, under the protection of the pagan gods, Rome had thrived. Now that the people had abandoned their old gods for Christianity, the gods in turn had abandoned the people. At the same time, the Christian god had failed to protect the city. Surely, the people reasoned this was a false god. Across the Mediterranean, in, in the North African town of Hippo, the, accus the accusations reached the ears of the local bishop, Aurelius Augustinius, known today as St. Augustine. To quell these doubts, he began writing the City of God, a book that would become a landmark in Christian thinking. Okay. Now, for many reasons, Augustine could not accept the prevailing notion that time consisted of everlasting cycles. For a start, if life was predestined, com comprise comprising the repetition of events, of a previous age, it denied the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. Second, if all one's actions could be put down to predestination, there would be no inducement to follow the good life prescribed by Christianity. The third, 
he found the popular notion that these cycles repeated themselves absurd. In Christian philosophy, he maintained the world could not be eternal. Okay. So now, um, now we know a little bit of history as to why um, uh, chronologists started their um, their studies to um, to uh, get a time of the the beginning of creation. I forgot to mention the significance of the great year or the precession of the equinox. Um, the, the reason why it, it's important to take a look at what that is in astronomy is because we've heard many times over the years that an age is approximately 2000 years long. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One thing that I say probably 99% of the people in class do not ask is if an age is approximately 2000 years long, how do you know that? Where does that come from? And I'm telling you that that comes from the procession of the equinox. So do some research. Okay. This is something and a cyclical event of the of the earth that happens and has been happening for a long time and it's not new knowledge it's something that's been known about for a long time okay so when you make a statement in class about something make sure you know what you're talking about teach the people if you say that an age is approximately 2000 years long and you say that oh this this particular age has gone over 2000 years you better know what you're talking about because someone like me or someone out in the world may challenge you so i'm i'm trying to to warn you um okay so um go ahead with the next bullet okay as the morning of january 30th 1649 dawned over London. Okay, so we're we're about to um, skip about 1,200 years of history from St. Augustine mm -hmm. down, down to Bishop Usher. We're going to Ireland now, from Africa mm -hmm. to Ireland, okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry. No problem. Irish Bishop James Usher was at last close to completing his life's work, The Annals of the World. A comprehensive history of ancient times, starting with the day of creation and finishing in AD 70. It was an immense undertaking and an impressive piece of scholarship, drawing a linear thread from thousands of ancient books and manuscripts written in a multitude of different languages. It had taken over 20 years to write. But at last, the first volumes were finished and would be published in London the following summer. Although the completed work sketches to 2,000 pages, yes, I'm sorry, stretches to 2,000 pages of densely printed Latin, Usher's fame rests on a single paragraph featuring a single date, Saturday, October 22nd, 4004 BC. According to him, on this day at six o'clock in the afternoon, the world and time began. Keep that in mind, according to Usher. And every time that you would hear in the lectures that Dr. Kenley encouraged to be recorded, he, rec he, he wanted his lectures to be studied. Every time he mentions 4,004, 2,000, 6,000 years, he always says, according to the leading chronologists, okay? He's not giving you a time. He's referring to theirs to give you some perspective of time, okay? Dr. McCain, would you like to continue? 
Uh, Joyce, I'm going to continue for Dr. McCain. Okay, thank you, Lucy. Um, we're at the top of this page, page 14 through 15. The first person known to propose an actual date for the beginning of the world was the second century bishop Theophilus of Antioch, the city of Hete in modern day Turkey. At this time, the fledgling Christian church was struggling to gain wider acceptance, but found its progress hampered by critics who questioned its validity. How could a religion barely a century old possibly be the true faith, they demanded, when Greek and Roman gods dated back as far as anyone could remember? It was a fair point and one that Theophilus was familiar with. His pagan friend, Autolycus, had raised exactly that question, but the early church fathers had already found an answer, maintaining that the coming of Christ was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. They adopted the Jewish books of the Old Testament as their own, and in one fell swoop, Christianity acquired what was accepted to be the world's oldest and most detailed history. It was a master stroke. Once Theophilus had shown the way, others followed. Over the next 1,500 years, some of Europe's most distinguished theologians and philosophers attempted to find the date of creation. But despite their best endeavors, no two scholars arrived at the same result. Bede, in 7th century England, named the year as 5199 BC. Martin Luther in Germany plumped for 4000 BC, while the 17th century astronomer Johannes Kepler decided that 3992 BC was the most likely date. A later survey of works published in this period found 128 different dates for the creation, ranging over three millennia. The youngest, 3761 BC, came from the chronology of the Western Jews, while the oldest, 6904 BC, was derived by Alfonso, a 13th century king of Castile. The lack of agreement was spectacular. The wide range of dates they believed was the result of conflicting biblical texts and poor scholarship. So in this, this quote here, I just want you all to keep in mind that no one, just like the Messiah says in the 24th chapter, no one knows the time. You don't know when it began and you're not gonna know when it's gonna end. Just be prepared. Okay, so, um, okay, the next, we're almost done with this book, and then we'll get into Dr. Kinley's um, quotes here. Page 16 through 18. On December 20th, 1601, at the age of 21, Usher was ordained a priest and appointed preacher to the state. He gave the regular Sunday afternoon sermon in Dublin's Christ Church cathedral. Here in the city, the statute of Recusants. Thank you. Recusants was clearly enforced under which anyone who failed to attend was fined one shilling. Despite this injunction, many leading citizens stayed away, accumulating fines of over 100 pounds. Usher certainly held no sympathy for the Catholic point of view and railed against it from the pulpit. The Church of Rome was the Babylon of the Apocalypse, the Pope the Antichrist, but he needed more than rhetoric to counter the charges leveled against his religion. Now, Usher, now, Usher, was, a, Usher was a Protestant minister, uh, okay? And we know that the Protestant church began with Martin Luther. Some 15, no, 14 or so, 100 years after the Catholic Church began. Okay, go ahead. 
Where was the Protestant church before Martin Luther? The Catholics asked, reminding him that it was less than 90 years since the German priest had nailed his thesis to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg. How could such a new religion possibly be the true faith? The accusation stung Usher into action. The only way to counter these charges was to acquire a detailed knowledge of history and the Bible. Page 21 through 23. In January 1624, at the age of 44, Usher was appointed Archbishop of Arma, the most senior position in the Church of Ireland. And there he set to work on his ambitious project, his universal history of the world. Any history needed a starting point. And as for Usher, finding the date for the beginning of time was a natural progression from his battles with the Catholics. He needed a date he could defend against the objections of the Jesuits. The backbone of his history would be the Bible. But this presented him with his first dilemma, which version to use? Different versions gave different dates. For example, the Greek-derived Septuagint Bible used by the Orthodox Church in Eastern Europe gave dates that stretch back almost 1,000 years earlier than those of the Hebrew-derived Bible used by the Catholic and Protestant churches in the West. The difference is mainly due to the fact that the Greek text, Adam and his immediate descendants begat their offspring 100 years later than in, the, than in the Hebrew Bible. For his chronology to have any credibility, Usher would have to show that the Bible he used was the true one. A strong tradition stemming from an ancient Jewish text held that the world would end in an apocalypse when it reached the age of 6,000 years. Yet the dates in the Septuagint added up to at least 6,500 years. As the apocalypse clearly hadn't happened, they declared the Greek version unreliable. The Greek text, I'm sorry, the Hebrew text, on the other hand, came with an equally impressive pedigree. Back in the 6th century AD, Jewish scholars at the Talmudic schools in Calderia and Palestine had collected manuscripts and oral testimony with the aim of reproducing as closely as possible the original text of the Old Testament. Uh, with, with this um, statement right here, I want you to think. Um, Moses had the first five books of the Bible written down um, a, approximately 1,500 years before the Messiah was born. Here it is about 600 years after the Messiah had passed. So that's the span of 2,000 years, about. You have uh, Jewish scholars trying to uh, put back um, the Old Testament to the original text. So your question should be, what happened to the original? And why are they trying to get back the first five books of the Bible or all the books of the Old Testament back as original as they possibly can? That means that what we even use today is the best that everybody has been able to keep together and translate and all that kind of stuff. So know that, okay, that there's there's some problems here, but you can get enough truth out of this Bible um, and you don't have to worry about all that, but be aware of it. Go ahead and read. For years, Western chronologists had favored the Hebrew version. Since both the Anglican and Catholic churches used translations of its text, but in 1616, a remarkable discovery had called its veracity into question. In that year, Pietro della Valle, an Italian traveler,
passing through Damascus had chanced upon an ancient and previously unknown version of the first five books of the Old Testament. It became known as the Samaritan Pentateuch, and that were and word that its chronology was even shorter than that of the standard Hebrew text spread rapidly through the scholarly circles of Europe. The discovery not only called into question the authenticity of the Bible, it raised the possibility that there might be other, even more ancient biblical texts waiting to be discovered texts that might shed further insight into what was the true version. Dr. Benho? Yes, 27, <laughs> page 2730. Usher turned back to his books, the only hope of bridging the gap between the Old Testament and the year AD 1 was a was to piece together the chronologies of many different civilizations and use them as stepping stones. Okay, so let, let me let me pause right here. Um, uh, so real quick about the authenticity of the Bible. We know that Dr. Kinley, one of the reasons why he wanted the, before he began teaching, um, was to have the elementary chart painted was because he wanted to show the repetition of principles by the tabernacle pattern and how th that is what you can use to show the authenticity of the Bible. You can find mistakes based on um, Yash Yahweh's pattern um, you can find mistakes in, in reading. And he, you know, pointed out certain things that weren't properly translated or that weren't in the right context. Like the first chapter of Genesis is out of context. It should be placed, um, what, at Exodus, um, what, 24, 16? 24, 16. Yeah. Um, so he, this is how he taught us how, you know, we don't have to, we need to be aware that there's some issues with, the biblical text, um, but there's a way for us to know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Um, so um, another thing is that he demonstrated during his ministry that you, you get such and such a Bible and you get this Bible over here, this version and get this one and compare your verses you know, so you have an idea of what what's going on. Why does this translation say this and this one says that, right? So I, I I'm just trying to bring back to your remembrance some things that we should have been taught and should be exercising um, on our own journey. Okay, I'm sorry. I, um, so we're jumping in this this uh, particular quote here from the book. Um, we're jumping now to when Usher is uh, trying to figure out when the Messiah was born. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can start over. Okay, Usher turned back to his books, the only hope of bridging the gap between the Old Testament and the year AD 1 was to piece together the chronologies of many different civilizations and use them as stepping stones. What made this task so difficult was that each nation had recorded its history using its own idiosyncratic system. The Jews, for instance, had used re regional years, the number of years from, start, from the start of a king's reign. The Greeks had counted in Olympiads, the four-year period between Olympic Games, while the Romans had measured their early history in years elapsed since the foundation of Rome. To add to the confusion, in some countries, the years weren't even 365 days long. The Arabs, for instance, had used lunar years, which were based on the cycle of the moon and lasted just 354 days. 
And finally, many nations began their years on different dates. So while the Roman year began with the winter solstice, the Attic Greeks had used the summer one. The Egyptians had waited until the sun entered Aries. Faced with this confusion of dates, eras, epochs, and seasons, Usher turned to the pioneering work of a man who had trotted the same path 50 years earlier, the great Renaissance scholar Joseph Justice Scaliger. Scaliger. He had invented a master calendar, the Julian period, which began on a completely hypothetical day, January 1st, 4713 BC, a day that Scaliger was confident had never occurred. He had chosen it because all recorded events in history could be placed after it. What he had created, in effect, was the time equivalent of an existing long tape measure <laughs> alongside which the shorter yardstick of all different chronologies could be laid. It's kind of like uh, what um, uh, microbiologists do. <laughs> they 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 may take like um um a, say they'll they'll find some bones somewhere and they they can find a little bit of viable um uh DNA code but it's not the whole thing um and 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 so then they just take a piece and then they can elongate it it's it's he's doing the same kind of thing exactly yeah <laughs> all right um so Okay, but the Julian period wasn't the only technique you usher borrowed from Scaliger. He unsheathed, wait a minute, he unsheathed what could become the most powerful weapon in the chronologist's armory, astronomy. The stars and planets are perfect timekeepers. The year, after all, is defined as the time the earth takes to orbit the sun. As the earth follows its course year after year, the position of the stars, moon, and other planets appears to change in a regular, predictable way. Knowing this movement, it is possible to calculate how the heavens could, how the heavens would have looked at any moment in history. Luckily for Usher and other chronologers, the literature of ancient historians was peppered with references to astronomical events that could be dated. The summer and winter solstices, new and full moons, eclipses, the Babylonians had recorded an eclipse as early as 763 BC. More important, they were sufficiently rare that of that if one was recorded as being visible from a certain place at some unknown time, it was almost always possible to pin down the exact year, day, and hour it had occurred. One important date that Usher decided on the strength of an eclipse was the birth date of Christ. When the 7th century monk Dionysius, Dionysius Equus had, de had devised the modern calendar, he had anchored it on the birth of Christ, which he believed had occurred in 1 BC by the 17th century. However, mounting historical evidence suggested that Equus was wrong and that Christ had been born earlier than this. Now, let me ask you guys, does anybody know who Dionysius is? Yes. Dionysius who, Exiguous, yes. Who, uh, do you know um, uh, a popular thing in um, Bible class that we use of his that no one ever refers back to where they got it from? Do you know what I'm 
referring to? Well, I, I, I know that it was Archbishop Usher that pointed out his error mm -hmm. and pointed to 4 BC when Pilate was alive to 29 AD. Instead yes. Of, right. Yep. So when when um when you see someone do uh, uh, calc a quick calculation of chronology uh, to come up with uh, the length of this current age that we're living in, and they may or may not put in or add or subtract a four year error. Um, they're doing it Happy because do of, of this gentleman Happy right here, of this monk in seventh century. Happy Go ahead. They had something to do with taxation. Yeah, I think. Well, I didn't. I don't think I put any um, quotes on here. Yeah, that was part of the confusion with when uh, Herod had uh, passed, because you know the Bible states that Herod was alive when the Messiah was born, but when um, uh, the the time that uh, Dionysius has the Messiah being born. Herod is already dead. So, so yeah, that was a problem. <laughs> All right, the last last quote of um of the uh of this reference book, and then we'll get into Dr. Kenley's lectures and wrap it up. Okay. Uh look, where are we? Looked at looked at any movement history. Uh start at one I important think... date. One think, important date, the okay, next paragraph. Here we go. Okay. One important date that Usher decided on the length of an eclipse was the birth date of Christ. On the strength. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. One important date that Usher decided on the strength of an eclipse was the birth date of Christ. Thank you. When the seventh century monk Dionysius Aquius had devised the modern calendar. He had anchored it on the birth of Christ, which he believed had occurred in 1 BC by the 17th century. However, mounting historical evidence suggested that Aquius was wrong and that Christ had been born earlier than this. Page 31. Usher had three alternative alternative texts for the Old Testament, his own Samaritan Pentateuch, the standard Hebrew text, and the Greek Septuagint. They each gave different dates. Okay, Even so so Usher has three three different. He's trying to decide which which uh, Bible he's going to use to uh, base his chronology on. So he's got three different books that um, he's chosen. There's other versions. Uh, we we talked earlier about um, or saw earlier that there's, um, you know, people have come up with 128 or so different dates of the beginning of creation. So uh, Usher's narrowed down to three different texts, ancient texts that he's going to use to come up with his chronology the Samaritan, the Hebrew, and the Greek. Mm -hmm. so, so he's he's going to uh, look at this and say, well, how long from um, Adam in the garden to the flood, how much time is that in each of these books? And this is what it is. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. they, they, each gave, they each gave different dates, even for the simplest part of the chronology. Getting a bad echo. Yeah. Somebody's got their mic open. Okay, let's try it uh, again. Five, six, seven, three, one, eight, nine needs to mute. Okay. Five, six, seven, three, one, eight, nine, three, four, six. Please mute. Okay. They each it's gave different. different Jackie, would someone cut off my camera, please? I, I don't know how to cut it off. Thank you. I'm not a co-host today. I can't. Okay. They each gave different dates, even for the simplest part of the chronology, the period between the creation 
and the flood, the Samaritan put this period at 1,307 years, the Hebrew at 1,656 years, the Greek at 2,242 years. There you have it. You guys will never know the year of the beginning of time. And Dr. Kinley did not tell you when it began, uh, and neither did he tell you when it ended. Right. Now, uh, let's go over that. Now, um, I put these quotes in here. Of course, you need to read the entire lecture to get the context, but I tried to put in as much context as possible. I know we only have, what, about 40 minutes, and then I have to go back to work. <laughs> And um, but this, I, I wrote this out for you to study. Um, do not say Carla said. No, you you take what you see here, what Dr. Kinley said, and you do research on what he was talking about. Um, so okay, so the first lecture I put all of these quotes in chronological order for you. In 1958, Dr. Kinley said, "Now in your Bibles." Exodus 25, 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which will show thee in the mount. This picture that you see on this chart, and when the children of Israel left the land of Egypt, chronologists tell us 1490 BC. Did he say, I tell you? No, he said, chronologists tell us 1490 BC. I'm almost tempted in every phrase there's no such, no, there's so much error theologians speak. There's no such thing as BC. But for the sake of imparting to you the thought, nothing ever was before Christ. So we start out with a theological error. But for the sake of explanation, chronologists Asher, Usher, and Hastings say that the migration from Egypt through the wilderness of Sinai and into the land of Canaan happened around BC 1490. Now they went through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. They were all baptized in the cloud and in the sea. Okay. Next lecture, 1966, Mystery of Iniquity, Christ, Peace, and Miscalculates is Coming. Would someone like to read that? Now that day of the Lord and that peace that they're negotiate that they're negotiating about that day of the lord will come as a thief i didn't say night said day of the lord will come as a thief in the night and while you're all deceived with all these old erroneous uh hypocritical satanic doctrines babylon then fell Roman Catholicism is, is just as flat as it can be. They have admitted right, they have admitted right straight. It's the newspaper, folks. Babylon has fallen. They have admitted, they have admitted that they was wrong. Pope John said this, he said, and it's a famous saying now, what did he want to call the ecumenical council in the first place? If the church was right, why do you call a, a council? And this is what he said. Said he was going to raise the windows, let some fresh air in, right? In the 17th chapter of Revelation and in the 18th chapter of Revelation, John said, out, of, out on the Isle of Patmos, he saw the angel of the Lord flying through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Now listen, talking about this open admission, he's sitting and listening right at it. And that voice was crying. Babylon is falling. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Why for? Because 
that you receive not her plagues. Listen, for she has become the cage of every fowl that's a profuse odiferous smell. She has become a cage of every foul and unclean spirit. And Pope John said, admitted, I'm going to raise the windows and let in some air and let some air in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Babylon means confusion and they're confused. Okay, no. so be, be, uh, let me stop right here. Now, the context before we, you see, he's about to start talking about 2000. The context of what he's talking about is Babylon has fallen and the people that's in the audience are seeing it on the news, reading about it in their newspapers in 1966 and before. They've seen it with their own eyes and he's he's telling them you've seen the fulfillment of babylon fallen around the whole world okay this is the context okay go ahead and read babylon means confusion and they're confused now look now you you understand that now don't you she's she she's fallen now look, she's come to naught within one hour. Dr. Gross, the president, is recording. An hour is 40 years. Now, Roger. This, this hour of uh, being a 40 years, this calculation is time with Yahweh. So when we say that an age is approximately 2,000 years long, and you, you guys are going to go back and do some research on what the precession of the equinox is, so you can see how um, how astronomers and and everyone has uh, determined that an age is based on the well. I'll let you do your research, but there are approximate each age is not two thousand years long. Right. Some is shorter, some is longer. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it doesn't all, and we are currently living in a time where when we look. It's either at the uh, the ri rising of the I think it's the rising of the sun in the east and the constellation that we see in the east that's going to change. It's currently changing. We're in transition here. Um, so um, I said that because when he mentions an hour is forty years, you get that forty years by calculating time with Yahweh. So. Um, uh, when we go into Second Peter and and he says a day with Yahweh is as a thousand years. It's mm -hmm. not a thousand years. It's as a thousand yes, years. A thousand. Yeah, and you you calculate how um how long an hour is from that you get forty years. So we'll we'll go over that another time. That's a whole nother lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go ahead. An hour is forty years. Roger, can you put this on on this board? Now, what I'm after is up to up to is is six thousand years. I'm up to six thousand. Now it can't be forty years from there. Okay, so everyone listen here. When he's talking about this forty years, he's not talking about okay from 1966 where we're at now. We don't have another forty years. He's saying that Babylon has fallen, they've fallen within an hour, and that is the 40 years. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Now, you know what I mean? 40. Now, that's one hour. Bishop, I'm telling you, when you correctly apply that, that Babylon or confusion is fallen within one hour or within this last 40 years, it it isn't but 30 more years from here to AD 2000, not 40. 10 years of it's already gone. 10 years of it's already gone. And when, so now Babylon, she'll have to fall. So the Messiah said that it's, things are going to get wild, people, and except those days be shortened, 
then no flesh is going to be saved. And we, we've all been taught when he mentions those days, that that's at least two days of millennia, approximately 2,000 years. So the Messiah said, except those days be shortened, no flesh shall be saved. So here you have Dr. Kinley talking about how um, John saw Babylon fallen, you know, and that um, uh, here, here we are living in those last days, those 2,000 years of, of millennia from the Messiah that he said would be shortened, that we really don't know what year we're in. You, you, if you know anything about what Usher and the other chronologists, they did the best that they could with coming up the time that they're living in now and backwards. But we really don't know what year we're in. We really don't. Correct. Okay, so, um, so excuse he, me. Excuse me. Can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Because this is this is making my brain itch. But I remember reading years ago just about calendars. How at one point they they would put in days. They would put they would take out days. The the Roman Catholic Church in order to okay. make the sun um, line up with with the way the season should be so right. even back then just from reading that like in world book it's like well what what year is it if they put in time and they took out time yeah yep there is i don't know how you gonna get what you know and the best that we have is astronomical time and we don't we don't know but we can take what we do know and see the repetition of cycles that we can see and know that Yahweh's real, right? Oh, um, okay, so um, okay, so when he mentions here AD two thousand, and he said, and he says, um, uh, Babylon is fallen within an hour, within the last forty years. He's telling you that, listen, Yahshua said that these days will be shortened. And we just now saw Babylon falling. So you've, you've seen the fulfillment of it. He's not telling you that you only have 40 years to live until the consummation. Dr. Kinley did not give you, and neither did the Messiah, and neither did an angel from heaven. They, they shouldn't have give you a date and time that is going in December 31st, 1999. It's stupid. It's dumb. Nobody told you that except for a false prophet. Okay. So um, go ahead and read this. Read this one more time and we'll continue on because okay. we only have a half an hour. Babylon means confusion and they're confused. Now look, now you, you understand that now, don't you? She's, she's, she's fallen. Now look, she's come to naught within one hour. Dr. Gross, the president, is recording. An hour is 40 years. Roger, can you put this on, on this board? Now what I'm after is, up to is, is 6,000 years. I'm up to 6,000. Now, it can be 40. Now, it can't be 40 years from there. You know what I mean? 40. Now, that's one hour. Bishop, I'm telling you, when you correctly apply that, that Babylon or confusion is fallen within one hour, or within this last 40 years, it isn't but 40 more, it isn't but 30 more years from here to AD 2000. Not 40. 10 years of it is already gone. 10 years of it is already gone. Now when? So now Babylon, she has to fall. You'll never get to the AD 2000, because this dispensation back there, Dr. Harris put it on the board, it's already there. 
was 1656 years. That's the antediluvian age. That, that age was 1656 years. That's to the flood, from Eden to the flood. And from the flood to the cross, that's 2,381. You got yeah, it I'm right gonna on go that off. One. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. From the flood to the cross, that's 2,381. You got it right on the board. And from the cross down to here, where we are now, it's 1,933 years. Now, anybody can add that up. See, a sixth grade scholar. Now then, it said, this one's a short age here. This one, an age is approximately 2,000 years long. That's the approximately size of an age and them three ages would be 2,000 apiece, would make 6,000. Now, this was a short age here. This one is a long one here. And that's why the Messiah said, where I told you to read at, I don't know how many times except those days be shortened, there wouldn't be no flesh saved. Here's this angel that's flying through the air of heaven, crying with a loud voice. Babylon, in the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, Babylon is fallen, and she's fell within one hour. You've seen the ecumenical council convene. You know they admitted that they were that they was wrong. And Protestants at the International Council of Churches, they admitted that they was wrong. Now, Babylon is fallen, folks. You can't get around it. Don't say I'm bringing accusations against them. They're saying so their self. And you can't. You haven't got but 30 more years anyway. You fix it. He said, now, unless... This age should be shortened, physically shortened. This was a long. This one that you're living in now, it's got to be a short one. The only way, the only thing that we can rely on is if we believe that Yahshua is the Messiah. If we believe that man that walked the earth is Yahweh from heaven, if he said that it's going to be shortened, it's going to be shortened. We don't know when that's going to be, but he told us to be ready, right? Okay. Okay. Um, will you uh, will you uh, continue, either Jackie or Lucy? I'll, I'll continue. Now, now listen. Now, oh. now listen. Now we've talked about war and we've talked about peace. You read out of the first epistle of Paul. And you, we begin with the 16th verse, and we said, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel. Or with I'm sorry, Dr. Pratt has a question. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. I didn't want to interrupt. But I saw in this paragraph where it says, the paragraph above, mm -hmm. where Dr. Emily is quoted here saying, And from the flood to the cross, that's 2381. Yeah. So my question is, when I look at the chart, mm -hmm. I know he, you know it's been mentioned that there are errors and it's important for us to practice discerning. I see the chart, the ages and dispensation chart oh, that we coined, yes. showing the ant, the post diluvian age at 2377. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the uh, four years, the four years uh, oh, error, Dionysius's error. Oh, okay, yes. so include the four, so. Include the four years then, yeah. Well, he, in this particular instance, is, is uh, including it. He hasn't subtracted right. it. That's, yeah. Okay, that answers my question. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now, listen now. We've talked about war and we've talked about peace. You read out of the first epistle of Paul, 
we begin with the 16th verse and we said the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel or with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first now the people are looking at that as way down yonder they don't know where it is some of them looking down there and others don't know where to look just deceived and fooled by it and going on now when paul wrote that epistle that first epistle to the thessalonians and told them that the day of the lord that's in the fifth chapter just don't pay attention to them divisions in them chapters and get all messed up like they've been doing read right on into the sixth or right into the fourth and into the fifth what he's saying here is that those chapters, somebody put them chapters and verse numbers in there, but it's a whole letter right. to the Thessalonians. So, you know, just don't stop at the end of a chapter. You might get, need to get the context into the next one. Right. Um, he said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, somebody thought he's talking about knocking over the tombstones and all of that. But you must be resurrected right where you're sitting there in your seat, spiritually so. You're the grave in which your inner man is dead. Paul said, she that liveth in pleasure is dead yet while she lives. Right. You're, you're dead yourself. That's, that's what's wrong. This grave, this body, this grave that you're in. Paul, talking to the Ephesians, said, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses of sin. You're the fella. And when you get the Holy Spirit, then you are resurrected. That's what the resurrection is. Mm. That's, go that's going on now. They expect him to jump down out of the cloud someplace. You and your carnal mind, that's what the devil out there is telling you. Now, when Paul wrote that epistle to the Thessalonians, we got on down in the end of the fourth instead of them reading on into the fifth and began with the first verse of the fifth. They didn't do that. So then they, at that, at that day and time, they was looking for him to jump out of the sky. Right. The seventh day of Ventus. Yes, I'm going to talk about it. I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about it, about it all. I please and there ain't nothing you can do about it either and if you don't like it I'm going to tell you anyhow um they was looking for him the seventh day Adventist here they were looking for him to come in 1844 they miscalculated 2300 Daniel days of Daniel and 1844 they were was expecting and they done sold their properties and they did everything and wait out in the house tops and the roofs and all and wait. They expected to see him to jump through the clouds at any time and taking that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And they calculated the 2300 days or 2300 years from BC 457 and ended up with 1844. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? There's Dr. Harris has it right, got got it right there on the board. Now, and now here's Jehovah Witnesses. They come along and they miscalculate a prophecy and them devils I'm talking about in the church going around deceiving the people and got all this unrest on earth, wars and pestilence and famines and these hypocrites in these churches and these false prophets in these churches talking about we're preaching the word of God and we're this and we're that and and the other and you can't tell them nothing and millions upon thousands of millions Roman Catholics and Protestants have been deceived now here's the Jehovah Witness they said they was calculating a period seven times that God said he would punish Israel in their own in her own land and seven times that and figured figure it out in prophetic time 
I don't have time to go into all of that and show you by the book what I'm talking about. So that's, uh, we've got a few more here. I'll, I'll go ahead and read this one too. And someone yeah, can have to read it. Lucy can read for you. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Uh, it, it, sorry, it lived in 21-1971, Love and Lust, uh, Dr. Kinley. Now, this was the purpose of the meeting. We tell you the same thing all the time. We don't never tell you nothing no different. The purpose of that meeting was for you to become conscious of Yahweh and his eternal purpose, because we are right down to the end of this time. Now, are you listening? I tried to tell you that the Holy Spirit speaks through this body. I tried my best to tell you that. Now, Dr. Mathis just got through speaking. You know that. When Yahweh spoke from Mount Sinai, something happened. You get your newspaper. Now, you can just do anything with you want to do to suit yourself, but you ought to be here. And I told you I was going to stay here. And I told you that shaking up signifies the removal. Did it shake? Audience says, yes, sir, right on time. Dr. Kinley, everything I'm going to tell you, I'm not trying to show myself as nothing. See, our primary objective down here is to honor and glorify our Father. That's all we're concerned with. That's all we're concerned about, see? The admiration of personalities and individuals and all them kind of things, we don't care nothing about that. Yahshua the Messiah said in the 24th chapter of Matthew, unless these days be shortened. Now you're just not going up to AD 2000. There ain't going to be no overtime. You follow what I'm saying. And I tried my best to make you conscious of that before we pull the curtain down or before the curtain rains down on this age. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you understand? So again, he references the Messiah and the Messiah said, except those days be shortened. And we learn that those days is a 2000 year period approximately of an age so we also read in just one reference book where you can clearly see that we have no idea when this age what by our calendar we're using the gregorian calendar by our calendar or even the hebrew calendar which is like 200 and some odd years different than the one that we use at work every day um that we don't really know what year it is we don't know what time it is in this age but we can approximate but if the messiah said it ain't gonna be more than a couple of days before the consummation either you believe it or you don't uh it's up to you it's up to me uh, but just know that you're not going to know when that time is going to come and nobody should be telling you when that time comes. And if someone has told you what time that's going to come, then just pinpoint them as a false prophet and, and go about your way. OK, so uh, let's go to the next one. I think we just have a couple more because we're in 73 and he his last lecture is from 75. So 1973, Satanic Spirits in Ministers. Dr. Kenley, now for a short time, I want to go back. This BC, BC thing up here was up there last week. And what event there that he had fulfilled where? This BC you're looking at, right? Now this is 1973 AD. That's Anno Domini. Dr. Kenley is figuring on the blackboard. Four plus three is seven. Seven, nine, five. Now that's 5977, is that right? Now that's before and that's after as the theologians see it. 
He says, yeah, well, as, yeah. he says, as the theologians see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say, as the theologians see, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about them leading chronologists, biblical chronologists, Hastings, Asher, Usher. Now, they are the leading ones, and they're talking about B.C., 4,004 years before the birth of Christ. Now, I told you last year, uh, last Wednesday, that that was not so. There is no such thing as before. Now, we know the name is wrong. Let's assume now for a second that is before Yahshua. That can't be either. It's a matter of impossibility. Now, I have some of you, I'm pretty sure, haven't noticed this chart, and I'm going to point out something on this chart. Now, it says BY here. 4,000 is BY 1490. Had you noticed? Now, what you should have now, now what you should have now, get your King James Version and, and look at Genesis 1 and 1. Look at the margin of the translator and look up at the top of the page. Now, Genesis 1 and 1, and you will see there 4004 BC, meaning this, that the creation of heaven and earth took place 4004 years before the birth of Christ. That is not so. That is a misnomer. There is no such thing as before Christ. Okay. And this next one is SoundCloud number 15, uh, between 1969 and 1974. Dr. Kenneth. I, I actually put this right here because um, when we read in here, we're going to, he's going to mention, uh, I think, which one? By the Ash Cowell and Golda Meir. Yeah. yeah. Um, her, her, um, um, the time she was in office was between this time. So that's how I placed the time period of this lecture. Mm -hmm. Then in AD 70, then comes up Titus from Rome, throwing down the city, dispersed the Jews and scattered them every which way. Right? Now listen, listen at me now. I'm just going to take Asher, Usher, James Usher, and Hastings, James Hastings, chronology with this. Now they don't claim it's exactly right. From 606 BC, when the Jews are carried captive, the last of the tribes were carried captive to Babylon on down until, put that on the board doc, 1948 <clears throat> that was in some of your lifetime they did not have an independent state of israel until 1948 is that right ben gurion was the first then ben gurion jumped down when we sent our book over there and levi eshkol took his place is that right and levi eshkol died and golda Meir took his place who is presently in there now. Do I almost know my history? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. 1, 1974, living in the last days, Dr. Kinley. Now this is the, this is to loose them and the ark is to save them. Let me start again. Now this is the, this is to lose them, and the ark is to save them. He's talking what about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about um, what the is it Saint Peter's Basilica that took 120 years to build? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that's what he's referring to. Yeah. What I'm the reason why I brought that up is I want you to see what's going on now and how hard it is to explain. Now, look, let's get after this one, Freddie. Put them, put them ages back down there and tell me how, how many years there was according to Usher or Asher 
and add them together. The antediluvian was 1656. That's 1656. That's a short one. An age, listen folks, is approximately 2,000 years long. 2,000. A millennium is 1,000. Talking about time. That's all I'm talking about this morning. I don't want you to be dumb no more. The antediluvian. Antediluvian age is 2377. I mean, the antediluvian age is 1656. The post-diluvian age is 2377. And the present age was around from the death of the Messiah down to the present time is 1941. Now put them together. Add them up. I'm trying to find out. We're trying to find out where we are so we know how to behave ourselves, so we know what's going on. 5974. 5974, right? Now subtract that from your six days, and you'll find you don't have another jubilee, year of jubilee. We're waiting for that now. Now here's what you got. You subtracted, you subtract it, that from there. Now, he's got 26 years. Now listen, folks, listen to what I'm saying now. That's the long way. And remember, Yahshua the Messiah said, except those days be shortened, there wouldn't be nobody saved, no flesh. Now that ought to give you some idea about the situation and the condition the world is in. So you'll know. Now there's one other thing. I have to bring this in. I just have to bring it in so you can see a little better. Now, put down AD 34. That's the 33 and a half. Now, how far is it from here to 1974, where we are? 1941, 1940. Now, that means this is 1940. Now look, let's count this thing in in thousands, count 1,940. Now here's what I'm after, this being 1974 from AD 33 and a half, 33 and a half is going into the 34. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Now, if that be the case, then it's only just, it's just only 40 years. Done been here 40 years now, time to move. I mean, moving on out, cross through the veil. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. In other words, from AD 33 to 1974, the difference between one and the other, it would get that 40 years. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, I ought to tell you this. The Roman Catholic Church claims this. They're supposed to have 570 some million. They say that the end of the age will come or the end of the world will come. Or Yahshua the Messiah can jump down through the sky in 1975. Jehovah's Witnesses say 1975. The Church of God says 1975. Well, what do you think? I say that can't be. For you already done stage your 40 years long, and you haven't yet got out this year. That's right. All right. Now, I didn't say you would be, and you ought to be one way or the other, getting straightened out. I'm talking about straighten out now and be ready. Once your 40-year sojourn is over with, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Now, I thought it was necessary for me to come here and say something about this thing, so you will know something about how to calculate time. Now, the Apostle Paul or Saul said this, listen to what I'm saying now, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Now, here's what I'm after showing. In the cycle of time, as you have seen it out here, it's correct. Now, somebody's going to fool with this 
and try to figure out just when he'll be here. And I'll tell you what you're, what you're going to do. You're going to make a mistake because he's already here. All right. I know that it's 1257. And um, I think that uh, the rest of the document, you guys should go ahead and read on your own. And, um, um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you can talk to the uh, teachers you have in your own classes, or you can send me a message. Um, yeah, I, you, think, I think I think we should When am I coming back? Um, you guys always meet during the day. Yeah, but we can do a Saturday if you need it. Yeah, see, usually Saturdays is my running around getting errands done day. <laughs> so um, I try not to schedule anything on a Saturday, um, but I can come back during during the week. Um, I just need to know ahead of time so I can schedule it on my work calendar so nobody schedules a meeting on me. Okay. Um, but I would like to go over with you the next time um, uh, how to pick up um, uh, another principle of prophetic time um, uh, with 144,000. Um, I think that is reference. He's going to, Dr. Kinley in this lecture is going to, in one of them, he's going to reference this and uh, the verses before John talks about the 144. So I wanted to show you guys how to, how to um, pick up Israel being multiplied 144,000 within one prophetic day. So um, just let me know what, days you're um you're meeting next um in december maybe and um then i'll check my calendar and block a time yeah we meet from tuesday to friday 11 o'clock tuesday to friday okay i'll check my work calendar and see what day so i i hope um this helped someone i hope you weren't bored and um that that's the end. no not bored my my brain itches though oh okay all right well read read matthew 24 the whole chapter again take your time and then read read this uh these notes again i'm sorry somebody say raise their hand Mich michelle joseph wait a minute um carla if you have a moment could you put in the chat the name of that book that you mentioned at the beginning and the author's name. And if you would be available for questions, if an email address. Okay. If you'd be um, willing to provide that. Yeah. Um, the name of the book is actually um, on the notes, but I also put it in the chat and my email address. I have multiple email addresses, you guys. Um, but this one that's in here is the one I check daily. Could you okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you put your notes again in the chat? Yeah, sure. Thank you. That's why I didn't say. Thank you, Dr. Davis, for your lecture. And we certainly invite you back. We sincerely thank and appreciate everyone for their participation and thank everyone that came out to study with us today. Classes are held Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England, and our brethren in Jamaica have a 7 p.m. class on Sunday evenings, Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for our doxology, taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. 
let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, everyone. I'm going to have to log off. Thank Hi, you, Carla. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Peace, love, and